Perfect. I was waiting for that notification that the recording has started. Welcome everyone to Adobe Express Creating Meaningful Videos. We're going to do lots of creation today. Um, in the chat, if you have any questions while we're going through, uh, let me know. We're going to make a couple of different videos here together today. My name is Lori Roberts, and I am a lead learning guide with a company called Fried Tech. We are an Adobe partner, and we love to share everything that is Adobe Express, especially me. I love to do these sessions. I'm going to drop in the chat the link to the resource website that you're going to have access to today and then after our session is over. And during the session today, like I said, use that chat if you have any questions. And we're going to be doing some demo. And if you want to, I usually like to say, uh, play along with what's going on here. Um, feel free if you just want to sit back and watch. That is completely fine as well. And then come back and create later. So today our learning goal is to, uh, in this learning experience, we are going to create a video using Animate from Audio within Adobe Express, and we are going to create a video using a template. So the first thing we need to do is jump on in to Adobe Express so that we can start creating. So you're going to access Adobe Express from ClassLink, your little, we called it in my old district, the ClassLink portal is what we called it because we also use ClassLink. So you're going to look for that tile that is the Adobe Express tile, black tile with the rainbow A on it. While y'all are getting that loaded, a little bit about me that I uh, skipped right through. Like I said, I work for Fried Tech. I'm coming to y'all today from Houston, Texas the um, fabulous humid city of Houston, Texas right now. So um, prior to working with Fried, I was a, a tech coach and a high school CTE teacher, and I used Adobe in the classes that I taught. So I am very happy, like I said, to share Adobe Express. It's a great tool that now all students can use. It's free. We love it. Hopefully you already love it. And if you don't, hopefully by the time we're done today, uh, you'll be a new Adobe Express fan. So like I said, Adobe Express in ClassLink. And the first thing that we are going to look at, once you're logged in, I'll show you what your screen should look like. This is what it should look like. Uh, yours is going to say hi with your name on it. This new screen uh, home screen that they've unveiled. They unveiled this, I believe, last Friday is when I first saw it on my end. So if you don't see the new view yet, know that it's coming. But it's a quick and easy way for you to jump into any projects. If you scroll down, the same home screen is there that was there before with all of your different options. And as we go through today and we start creating, everything that you're going to create using the Adobe Express Editor saves in an area called Your Stuff. So over here on the left, there's a little folder called Your Stuff. That's where everything lives. In Adobe Express, you can think of this like your Google Drive or your OneDrive account. Um, when I click on that little folder, again, all my files live here. I can create folders in order to organize my files a little bit easier. So that is available to you. I always like to start out with it as we go through. I will remind you that this is where everything lives as we go through our time together. So the first type of video we're going to look at creating together is an animate from audio option. Let me know in the chat if you've used animate from audio before. If you haven't, that's okay. You can give me a thumbs down. I like a good emoji. So if you haven't used it, thumbs down um, or a good reaction, look at all those thumbs down. So we are already going to walk away with a brand new tool that you can start using immediately because this is the easiest way to start creating a video in Adobe Express and your kids are going to love it. What Animate from Audio does is it syncs your voice, so you will record your voice and it syncs it with a character of your choosing. So for example, I'm going to play this video so that you can see what it would look like. I created the background in Adobe Express, but you could also use a background that they give you. I picked a character, I picked this little fox here, and then I recorded my audio and Adobe Express did the rest. Oh no, I don't know if the audio is gonna share, hold on. 
As long as you're sharing a tab, it should. Yeah, and I'm not. So let's... It is this one. Share. Okay, here we go. They were a self-taught lawyer. They lived in New York City. They were active in politics. They said a well-adjusted person is one who makes the same mistakes twice without getting nervous. Who is this person? So hopefully you heard the audio. Did we hear the audio? Okay, I got some I got some thumbs ups and some head nods. Thank you. I appreciate that. So that is our um, animate from audio. Look, I love that you already love this. So um, based off of those hints, can you guess who that person was? Were y'all paying attention? They're a self-taught lawyer. They lived in New York City. They were active in politics. And they said a well-adjusted person is one who makes the same mistakes twice without getting nervous. Any guesses? I know we got to I don't know. They have a, a famous Broadway play all about this person. That should give you a, if you're into that, there we go, Meredith got it. Hamilton, Hamilton. exactly. I'm a big fan of the music of Hamilton, so had to include that there, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can actually create this a uh, wonderful little character together. So I am going to stop presenting again. This is going to happen a little bit frequently in this presentation because of the way that Google Meet is, but that is okay. We're going to make it work, right? So there we go. I'm going to pop back over. So when you're in Adobe Express, the um, there's a couple of ways to get to animate from audio and Adobe actually made it super easy when they unveiled this new screen because right here in the middle, you've got this animate your voice option. And when you see that right there over here um, in the middle, it's got this little blue monster guy right there. So, Ooh, okay, a couple of questions in here. I'll go ahead and cover this since y'all are mentioning it um, about the educator resources. So the way you can get that. Oh, hold on. Wait, sorry. I oh. put that in there. Um, so uh, and we so I asked because we've been dealing with this issue. People. So what happened is you must have created an account with your AACPS email at some point in time and your class link is confused. So you can try to clear your cache. On your browser you can um, also make sure your browser is you are logged into your browser with your aacps account and you accessed it the browser your actual chrome browser with your aacps account and that you accessed it through classlink if you try clearing your cache and it still doesn't work you can shoot us an email that that has to go to adobe like we have to send that to adobe because you have battling accounts. It's okay, you can do everything that Lori's gonna talk about. It's not gonna be a problem. It's just that you won't see that button there. You can still get to educator resources externally, but we will wanna make sure that we get your account sorted out, but that's an issue we send off to um, Adobe. So, sorry, Lori, I'm what's No, it's, say, a, no, it's like okay. A, um, sometimes when, when people first sign up for the accounts, there's a pop-up that pops up and asks them, are they an educator or a student? And usually if they don't pick I'm an educator, that's when they don't see that. So there is a place in their account where they can switch and toggle that that might be the fix too. But if you, if y'all know that it's with the main Adobe, then I won't. Yeah. Cause part. it, cause it kicks them. I mean, if you think you did that, Lori, please, by all means go over it. Um, but there was a period of time when we first got Adobe express that it was asking them to log in and then prompting them to create accounts and we have found that the people who kind of did that when it, in the early days we have had issues with those accounts gotcha so perfect now it searches them through but it just doesn't know which account to use so it's linking to the wrong one okay 
So if you if you don't see that, then just let them know and they will get y'all all fixed up. It's just an external link that links you to a bunch of different uh, resources on the main Adobe site. Um, but what we're looking for is animate from audio. So it's this guy right here, this little blue monster. Another place you can find it is if you scroll down just a little bit on the main home screen, that little blue monster is right over here. So that's kind of how I my uh, visual reference to animate from audio is look for the blue monster. So once we find that little blue monster, I'm gonna um, click on him either from up here or from down here. It's gonna give us the same thing. It is basically a wizard that will pop up on your screen. And you've got three tabs that you can pick from over here on the right hand side. There's a character, a background, and a size option. So first you'll pick your character and there are a lot to choose from and Adobe is constantly adding new characters into the mix. If you want to see the newest character, there's a category drop down and there's an option for new so you can see which ones are the newest ones. And we've got some uh, nice ones for the spring. We've got a cloud, we've got a clover, um, a little carrot and a chickadee happening there. So lots of great options that you can pick from. I'm gonna go find my favorite, which is Waddles the Penguin. So all I've got to do is click on the character I wanna add and it will get added to my screen. I can move the character around wherever I want it. I can resize it, make it larger or smaller if I want to as well. Once I pick my character, the next tab that I'll look at is the background tab. On the background tab, this is where I will select my background for my character. I can pick a custom color, so just a plain colored background if I want. I can also make it transparent, so then within the Adobe Express editor, I can then put whatever picture I want. I also have an option above all of those that says upload image. So if I create my own graphic or I find a picture that I want to include, I can upload my own picture as well. Or I can pick from one of the many options that they have within the background uh, library. And since I've got uh, Mr. Penguin here, I'm going to pick winter ice float. So that's going to be my little character there. I then have a third option that I can pick, which is the size option. So if I click on that tab, I can then choose if this is a square video, if it's a long, uh, what we call vertical video, uh, portrait option in there, just a little bit wider. It can be landscape, which was what mine was on default. Just know if you pick landscape, you're gonna get the most options showing up if you're utilizing the backgrounds that are built into Adobe Express. From here, I then move over to this main area. And from here, I want to make sure I toggle on enhanced speech. What that does is it kind of isolates the microphone that's closest to the person talking so that even in a classroom full of people or with a lot of background noise that's going on, it's gonna isolate just your vocals and it's gonna enhance that speech that's coming from that microphone you're using. So this also works with just like a built-in microphone as well. You have up to two minutes that you can record right here, two minutes that you can record. You can record and pause as you go. If you make a mistake, you can always start over. So what I'm going to do is I am going to hit record and record a little bit of audio so that we can see how this works. Hi, I'm Fraser the Penguin and welcome to Antarctica. Did you know that we experienced six months of constant daylight in the summer and six months of darkness in the winter? Could you imagine living and working here? So then I clicked done and I was very expressive in my talk and in my speech because the more expressive you are, the better the animation of that character will be because he'll be more animated because you were animated. Great question, Kristen. There is not a translation option. So um, whatever language you're speaking in, that's the language it's going to appear in. I um, There are some options within Adobe Express quick actions where you can add in uh, captions. Shows. So if you are going to come to the afternoon session at 140, I'm going to be showcasing how you can add in uh, captions and also how you can do translated captions. So come to that one. So here is my video and then now I can play it back. 
I'm not going to resync the uh, the tab, but I'm going to hit press play and you can watch the character move. Right microphone that was selected. Isn't that fun when that happens to us, right? So my character would be there. He'd be talking. So we're going to pretend that he was talking there. And the one thing to note is down here at the bottom, if I have in too much um, uh, some space at the beginning I want to cut out, I can trim this at the beginning or the end simply by pressing on those black bars and dragging them in. That's one option you have for editing really quickly and easily. And then once you're done, all you've got to do is hit download and this downloads that video to your computer. You also have an option where you can click open in editor. And if you open it in the editor, then you can make additional um, settings to it. So I could split things in half. I could put multiple of these videos together so I could have a bunch of different uh, scenes built together in my Animate from Audio. If all I do here is download it, I'm done with this. I can't make any changes to it. I can't then edit it unless I re-upload it back into the editor. So it doesn't save to your actual Adobe Express account unless you click open in editor. That's the only way it'll actually save to your account. Otherwise you're downloading it to your physical computer and it saves there. Uh, yes, it can be smashed with other apps because you're downloading it as an MP4. So wherever you can put a video and embed a video, that's where it will then live. So that's it. That's all we've got to do. I'm going to click back so that you can see those settings again. Character, background, pick your size, and then come and record your video. And then you are good to go on that Animate from Audio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give y'all about five minutes to play with that on your own, to create your own Animate from Audio quick little video. And I have a Padlet that is linked and it's linked on the resource site, but I'm also going to drop it into the chat so that if you create during this five minutes, you can download your video and then upload it into the Padlet and we can see some of those different examples. If you want to just explore some of those examples that are already in the Padlet that other people have created, you can do that as well. Okay, so about five minutes, we're going to go kind of silent. That way you can record your audio if needed. If you have questions, you can drop them into the chat. And I cannot wait to see what you guys create. Amanda, no, currently right now, there's no way to create your own character. It is only the characters in the list that you can choose from.
Okay, I have seen we've got some friends sharing over there in the Padlet. Let me bring it on over. Even more getting added. I love it. Let me share my uh, window with the audio. Where's Padlet? Where's Padlet? There it is. Share. And all of these from Clo the Clover one on up have been added in there for y'all to take a look at from all of your friends. I am going to click on, where'd the little sloth go? This one, because this is how we all probably. Oh, here we go. Hello, We're it's almost the Friday. Audio. The audio didn't sync up there, but um, we got our little sloth saying it's almost Friday, right? We're probably happy about that, right? So you got lots of options in here for y'all to go and look at. I thank you so much for sharing all of these in there. Um, let me know in the chat, Kristen, I'm going to answer your question in just one second. Let me know in the chat or via the video, how do you feel about Animate from Audio or even a reaction? Give me a reaction. And while you're doing that, I'm going to flop my screen back over because we've got one more video we're going to take a look at. Can I ask a question? You sure can. So I recorded mine, but I didn't get it to upload it to the Padlet because I got an error message twice that it couldn't like process the video. Is that something that's common? Because I, I had to do it like three times and then it worked. Um, It depends usually on how much other processing speeds happening on your computer and then also okay. how long the video is that you recorded if you recorded like the full two minutes it's going to take a lot longer uh than not and it's probably also google meet is a is a beast for your processor sometimes so it could just be because your computer is having to be on the meet with the video and everything running plus try to process that video that could be what's stopping it okay so no, I, I mean it came out really cute once it was done but i didn't get to upload it because it literally just came through okay perfect so, okay cool. so it just may take a little bit more time tony okay. what question question do you have i apologize i got lost in the sauce i was playing playing with it and I cannot remember how to share it. I've downloaded it. So what's my next step? So then there's a Padlet. So sorry. No, you're good. There's yeah. a Padlet link. I'm going to drop it back yeah. into the chat again. And once you get to that Padlet in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the Padlet, there's a plus sign. Gotcha. You click on that plus sign and you can um, upload your video into there. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> No worries at all. Yes, it's great for those younger kids. Like Amanda said, can't wait to use it, which I love to hear. Um, so the video, when it downloads, it's all really dependent on, because somebody asked about the quality of the video or the resolution. So it all really depends on which of the options you pick on the size of the video as to what the resolution is going to be when you download. They are um, higher quality videos. So once you do download it, when you open it, you're going to see it's going to open like full screen and it's still going to look really good. It's not going to be this tiny little video that is going to be um, kind of compromised when you try to make it bigger. Students love this tool. So it's a great one to try out with your kiddos. And if you are on Twitter, make sure that you uh, share it out or even Instagram share out this stuff. I love it because it really helps for those students that don't like to share their face on videos. We've got now a character that can be the person talking. And even for a teacher, I've had teachers say that they love to utilize this as um, a video for students whenever the teacher is out, like if they're feeling sick, they can leave a video announcement for their kiddos in their learning management system. So it's really great. Oh yes, jokes for morning announcements would be perfect for this. So I'm going to pop back. We've got our deck on there because I want to make sure that we can watch our next video with sound. So I made sure to share my tab. So the next video option we are going to look at is a video from a template. 
So there are a ton of templates available within the Adobe Express library. Adobe also shares out monthly challenges. And the one we're going to look at today is actually this month's monthly challenge for Adobe Express. So this one, you start with a video template and then you turn it and make it your own. So I'm going to press play so that you can see an example of what this would look like. Let's see if you can guess my mystery topic with just three clues. They are the only birds that can fly both forward and backwards. They can also hover in midair, fly sideways, and even upside down. They're big eaters, eating over twice their weight every day. Their diet consists of both nectar and flying insects. They migrate great distances from their summer to winter homes and back. One even flies 3,000 miles from Alaska to Mexico twice a year. Great job if you guessed my mystery topic is a hummingbird. This has been a Fried Tech production. Great job, those of you that guessed the hummingbird. Good job. So in this one, the template that is going to be given is has all of the scenes already included with each of the clues. And then all we have to do is replace those images with images that go with whatever uh, we decide is our mystery topic. And then we record in our voiceover narration to tell those clues and to tell what that uh, final object is. So to get to this template, I'm going to stop sharing again. This is a back and forth, right? Here we go. Share. To get to that template on our resource site that I shared, it's it's up here at the top. So that Padlet was there. I'm showing you this so that like after we're done today, you'll know where to find these. And that video template is also linked. I'm going to directly link that video template in the chat. So this video template, when you click on it, what it will do is it will open up a new project in the Adobe Express editor once we click on remix this design because it's a template it shows you this is what the template looks like and then in the bottom right hand corner we're going to click on that purple button down there that says remix this design once we click on that purple button it will open it will make a copy of this template and save it into your own adobe express remember after we're done to where you're going to go to find it this template can be used by your students. So that same link that I just shared out in the chat and that is available on this resource website, you can share that link out with your kids and they can do this same exact project, okay? So what we're gonna talk about is how to edit this. And then again, I'm gonna hopefully be able to give y'all a little bit of work time to kind of practice with it a little bit um, before we're done today. So looking at the screen, this is the main editor for Adobe Express. The editor for the video and for graphics is the same editor. The only difference is that with video at the bottom of the screen, you have an area called a timeline. On this template, the timeline didn't open automatically. We have a play button and you've got your timeline here. And then on the very far right hand bottom corner, there's a button that says edit timeline. So down here at that bottom, that edit timeline button. Once you click on that, it will then open up what the timeline looks like. If you've ever used any video editing software, iMovie, even, uh, what is it called, Movie Magic or Movie Maker, way back in the day on Windows, same thought process behind all video editors. You have items down here called scenes. So each of these little squares down here at the bottom or rectangles are our different scenes. And this black bar, here at the beginning, that's called our playhead. And wherever that black bar is, that's what's going to show in your editor window right above it. So if I scroll this over, it's going to go to different parts in my video. Now on the main screen, this one here, on the screen, you've got different objects. You can click to select them. Over on the left, a little panel is going to open up and that's our editor panel where we can make changes. We can also make changes to text. So this is a text box where it says three clues to guess my mystery topic. 
if we wanted to change that title, we could. So we could double click in there and we could change any of that text if we wanted. Me personally, I just left mine the same. The only thing I changed on this uh, main kind of title screen is the background color. So if you don't like that bright green, if it's not going to go with your aesthetic of what you're doing, you can always change it at any time at the very top where it says background color. You just click on that option and then you can pick from recommended colors. You can also pick from more colors at the bottom. You can pick from custom right next to it on that little tab. So I can then pick any color I want to. And then a third option is to click on the eyedropper tool where you can pull any color uh, from the screen that you see. So you can make those changes if you would like on that main first uh, scene. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop on over to our second scene because this is where we're gonna put our first clue of our mystery topic. And that mystery topic can be anything. It can be a, a person, it can be a place, it can be a thing, right? Any noun that we have there. It can be anything that we decide that we want to have our mystery topic. Now for the one that's in the template, they have a slow marker, they have a tree, and then they have this like serene area because theirs is a sloth. So those of you that did the sloth in your uh, animate from audio, you might like that. But for mine, I'm going to do a place and I'm going to start talking about different clues about that place. So the very first thing that I would do before I start actually editing the video for me is I would create a document and I would have my clues in order on what I want those clues to be, kind of like a script or an outline so I know what information or what picture I'm looking for that would go with that clue. So I'm going to do a place. And my first clue for my place is that it's a country that has 11 languages. Many are unofficial languages, but they also have 11 official languages for this country. And the cultures create a nickname for this country called the Rainbow Nation. So because my clue is Rainbow Nation, this slow icon doesn't fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply click on it and hit the delete on my keyboard to get rid of it. Then I'm gonna add in an element that goes with my Rainbow Nation theme. And to get an item onto the screen, there are a couple of different places we can go. We can go to elements, which include design assets, backgrounds, shapes up here at the top, and also icons. So if I searched for rainbow, I get a bunch of options underneath design assets. I get a bunch of options under backgrounds, which would be the background for the actual slide. I get a, a, no shapes for rainbows, that's okay. And then if I click on the last option for icons, I get more for icons. Icons and shapes are only one color. So they're gonna show up as black and gray. You can change their color to any color you want, but again, it's a one color option when you're picking a shape or an icon. Design assets are actually images, so they can be more fully colored when you're picking options from the design assets uh, menu. And there are a ton. Me picking rainbow, there are 319 rainbow options that I have to choose from. I can also find more images underneath the media option. So under media, you've got photos, videos, and audio that you can pick from. Under photos, again, I can search for rainbow. And the best thing about using your K-12 account for Adobe Express is that all of these results are filtered for education. So you can be rest assured you're getting safe uh, results whenever you are searching for uh, photos and any of those other elements. So I'm going to pop back over to design assets and I'm going to pick one of the rainbows. I like this one with the heart in it. So I'm going to click on it to add it to the screen. When I do, if I want to make it larger, if I want to move it, all I need to do is click on it on the screen and then I can resize it using those resize handles so I can make it larger. I can rotate it if I want to as well. And then I also have an option where I can actually animate this on the screen. So it's not just sitting there, but maybe it's moving while it's on the screen. So with it selected over on the left, I'm going to go all the way down on the panel to where it says animation. And this animation exists on all of the objects that you can add on your screen. 
So I would pick animation. And then I've got three choices, how it gets into the screen, what it does while it's on the screen, and then what it does to get off. So I'm just going to do looping, which is the one that's while it's on the screen, what's actually happening to this icon. And then you can see if I hover on top of these, it's going to actually show me a preview of what it does. So Bob kind of moves around a little bit, breathe, moves in and out, kind of zooms in and out, you click on there. And then you've got some different options in here for um, speeding it up, slowing it down in there as well. If you don't want to do any of that animation and you just want to add a picture, that's completely fine as well. This is your video and you can make it however you would like. So I've got my first clue in there for my first uh, country. Then what I would do is just continue to edit my video. Those transitions that are happening, they're built in automatically on this template because the transition has been added between the two scenes. So once again, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna select my second image for my second clue. I'm gonna delete it. And then I'm going to look at my notes to remember what is my next clue. So my next clue is this country is the only country in the world with three capital cities, one for each of their branches of government. So I can uh, search for government. That might be a keyword I want to look for. I could search for branches, you know, if we're thinking about a tree, branches of government. So it's a good way to like try to get the students to think about their clue and how can I visualize that clue utilizing images and pictures to help get that um, across. So I'm going to actually do a tree or branches, thinking about branches of government. And we're just going to go with these three branches, literally three branches, right? This is probably what, what our kiddos would do. So I'm going to put that there. I'm not going to add any animation to this one. And then I'm going to go to my third option. And with this one, this is a photo that's been added. Now with the photos, you have a couple of extra customization that you can do with them. This one has been cropped to be a circle. So if I click on it to select it over here on the left, I can see if I go to crop, I can change it and crop it to any uh, shape that I would like. So I'm going to go ahead and delete out both of those two options. And my third clue for my country is that they work hard to preserve their wildlife. They have protected land and marine areas, including uh, the Kruger National Park. So I am going to come over here to media and I'm going to search for national park. or I might want to search for wildlife. We could do that as well, right? The, the, these are all really good options. I like these lions here though. So I'm going to click on those lions. Again, once I have them selected, I can come over here to the left. And if I want to crop this to a shape, I just click on crop. And maybe I want to make it a, yeah, let's do a circle in there to get that that nice line there in the middle. So then we've got that option in there. And again, if I want to add additional pictures, I could maybe make that one small. I could come back over here to media and maybe I also want to grab this guy, right? And maybe I want to crop him as well to a different shape. So lots of options that you can add. They don't have to just be one picture. They could be multiple pictures. They could be just icons and not actual photos, um, but you've got all of your options in there. And then our last one would be, this is the reveal on who or what my country is, right? So once I have all of my uh, topics in there, I have my clues built in. The next thing that I would wanna do is record a voiceover because on my clue pages, I just put clue one. If I had actually written out or typed out what my clues were, I may not actually have to record a voiceover. But I like the voiceover option because it's giving students a chance to practice speaking and speech, and especially for English language learners or um, younger students, practicing that speech is always good for them. So to record a voiceover, what you do is you bring that little playhead all the way back to the very beginning. 
Now we're not going to worry about timings on our video and trying to make sure that we say everything we need to do within each of these blocks because right now these blocks are each set I can't zoom in on it but on each of those times they're set to five seconds which is very quick when you're trying to read a whole sentence if you have it in a script. So don't worry about timings. We can fix the links of all of these scenes after we're done doing our voiceover recording. Okay. So to add in a voiceover, you're going to go to the media option on the left. And then at the top where we've got photos, videos, and audio, we're going to pick audio. And then at the very top, there's an option called record voiceover. And that's what we're going to click in order to record our voiceover. Now it's going to ask me to give permission. And now I figured out why the first one didn't record because that is not the microphone I'm currently using. So I'm going to make sure and pick my uh, headset I have on. And now I can see the audio is working because this little dots are lighting up. Again, if I make mistakes, I can always go back and fix them. I can re-record if I need to, okay? So I'm going to record my audio. Let's see if you can guess my mystery topic with just three clues. This country has 11 official languages and many more unofficial languages. This colorful mix of cultures gives its it give gives its its nickname Rainbow Nation. It is the only country in the world with three capital cities, one for each branch of their government. This country works hard to preserve their wildlife. There are dozens of protected land and marine areas including the famous Kruger National Park in the north. Great job if you guessed my mystery topic is South Africa. This has been a Fried Tech production. So then I finish recording. Once I do, it adds in that voiceover down here at the bottom. So you can see it says voiceover. And because my voiceover was longer than my video, it adds in this blank scene at the very end. So now all I need to do is come all the way back to the beginning. So grab my little playhead, that black bar, and drag it back to the beginning and play this to listen to where those breaks happen in my clues. So in my audio, which I just realized you cannot hear again, <laughs> I'm going to click play. Right here is where I start saying this country and talking about clue one, right there where my playhead is. So that black line is going to help me figure out where I need to drag the edge of the first option. So I'm going to drag it over because that's the whole scene where I'm talking about can you guess the three clues to my mystery topic. Then I'm going to listen again. And I did mess up in there, so this was a little bit long. But then again, I just grab that edge and I drag it all the way to the bar of when I'm done talking about that first clue. And I just continue that process listening and extending out the clips as far as they need to go for the portion of that audio that is happening. And then when I'm done, I'm probably going to have a video that matches the length of my actual voiceover, which is that bottom bar at the bottom. And then I can just delete out this extra clip that's here. So I click on that very last topic, hit delete, and then now I've got that edited video. So some scenes are longer than five seconds, some are shorter, all depending on how long I talked for. So it makes it very nice that you don't have to try to fit what you're saying within each of those sections. You can just talk as much as you need to, and then you can trim it. Just like you can trim those um, video clips, you can also trim the audio clips as well as you're going through. And if you do make a mistake, which I did, I stumbled over some of my words, you also even have the option, if I click on the three dots, I can come up here and I can split the clip in half 
and I can basically cut out the piece where I messed up. So it doesn't even matter if you've recorded this long piece and you've messed up throughout, you can edit that within this editor. So I don't have to go back and re-record my audio 20 times until I get it perfect. I have the ability to edit it. They're constantly adding new features to the audio to the to this video editor within Adobe Express. Um, they've just recently added new transitions. So before it was just a straight cut. Now you can actually on each of these transition options, you actually can do a push and a dissolve in here. So let me click on that plus sign and show you. Oh, we're adding new clips. We're not changing. So when you click on here, this one shows what is applied. So I'm going to remove the translate. That's what I was looking for. And now we can dissolve, push, and slide on our transitions, where before it was only a straight cut that could happen. Now you have a little bit of flexibility in some of those transitions that you're doing as well. And then once you're done, all you've got to do is come up to the very top and download it. Again, it's going to download as an MP4. This one actually does tell you what that resolution is. So somebody else had um, asked about the Animate from Audio quality. You do have some options in here that you can adjust uh, those. Look, it even lets me output to 4K, and that's pretty high quality, going to be a lot larger file size if you do decide to output to 4K. Look, Kristen's happy about that, or Christian, sorry, is happy about that. So you have that option in there too, okay? We have, let's see, about five minutes left. Any questions that you have as um, I've been editing that video, specifically about this video editor, editing the template that I can answer for you while we still have a few minutes before I show you a couple of the other resources that are available for you. You do have, I didn't mention this because the template already had it on there. Um, within your media section for audio, there is background music and uh, audio options that you have for music. So if you don't like the options that uh, Adobe put in there for this specific template, there are a ton of uh, audio options that you have in there for background music. Um, and they tell you the times so you can know if they're gonna be long enough for your video or if you're going to have to add them in there as well. Um, there may be some issues with file size sharing on a Padlet. I think whenever you go to the Padlet to share, it will actually tell you how large your file size can be or it used to. I. I don't want to commit to an answer, but yes, I think there is a file size limit when uploading directly into a Padlet. So that is a good question. But you can also have students uh, download these videos and share them back with you through your learning management system as well. A few things I want to highlight on your resource page. I've given you a bunch of different graphic templates that you can also use uh, for your animate from audio. So the one that I did, which was the who is this person where I had the Hamilton, that's this template here. So if you click on any of those, you are able to edit it um, to set it up to be the background for your animate from audio. Um, or even the background for a video that students add their own narration. A few other templates in there, where am I, get to know me, and two facts and a fib. And then additional resources as well for video tutorials while you're starting to create videos if you want to go beyond that animate from audio. A link to the Adobe Education Exchange, which includes hundreds of thousands of templates and free resources for you be able to use this in the classroom with students. You can filter by grade level, by content area, and even by type of tool. So if you wanted to do a video, you can search by that. And then the, th the next option is that monthly challenge. So somebody asked about that. How do we find the monthly challenges? 
this link will take you directly to their homepage that includes, again, the uh, template and resource along with a video tutorial. So if you wanted to use this with students, you could play this video tutorial for them or have it as a reference for them. It's about five minutes long, so it's pretty quick um, and nice to be able to share in the classroom. And if you do any of the monthly challenges through Adobe Express, you can enter to win prizes. And this month, teachers, brand new red Adobe Express Stanley Tumblr. So if you need that Stanley, enter to win by completing that challenge with your students, okay? So now I just noticed there's a bunch more questions. So let me pop back in and see if I answered them all. There, so far, there is not a time limit that I found for the video creator. Um, I have not found a time limit on the video creator. So it appears you can do it as long as you need to. Um, suggestion in there on students can only use Padlet within Nearpod with, within your uh, schools. So uh, the recommendation is using Brightspace. I told you about those monthly challenges. Um, I agree, Kristen, with the uh, remove background feature that I didn't show you in this session. Um, if you're interested in learning more about that in my next session at 1130, we are going to talk about that remove background. Um, is there any way as a teacher to view student creations from your account? They would have to share them with you. So Sarah asked, if you want to see student creations, they are going to have to share those uh, creations with you. Um, again, Amanda, younger kids to share the videos, they're going to have to download them and then check with your uh, district folks to see what their suggestion is. Yeah, it's either download or have them share it directly with your email. They can't put the link, but your email. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to share in the chat with you all a link to our Adobe survey, and I think y'all also have a survey of your own as well. And just to, um, I'm going to share the attendance link, um, and just to address um, the Amanda's question about sharing, downloading and uploading is, um, I think, I think it's second grade um, is one of the like um, Maryland checkpoints for like digital learning is a skill uh, that they indicate by second grade students should be familiar with how to download and upload. And so with Adobe, the download is one click and in Brightspace, the upload is one click. It's one click, select the file. Um, but th they indicate um, you know, that the students should be able to do that actually at a, at a relatively, um, you know, young age. So, you know, who's that? Good share. Uh, yeah, but your, yeah, your attendance link is there. <clears throat> yeah, um, it's pretty straightforward. And honestly, we get a lot of middle school and high schoolers that don't know how to do it. So we know it's not like that they, they should. And so someone, everyone, we all probably should pay our dues and just, work on it with them they should know how to find a file on their chromebook <laughs> it's not bad it's not bad um yeah so your attendance link and the adobe eval they are separate make sure you do the attendance link to get credit from us adobe eval gives lawyer information but thank you guys you have uh lunch we will be meeting back at 12 30 for session three and I said my times instead of your time. So 1230 is correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Time zones. Another time session zones. later today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 1230, though, for the rest of you. Yes, to be back. yes, yes. So, yes. Thank you all so much.